Well, that was certainly exciting, wasn't it? Whee. The ball comes to an abrupt end after Alcaster's stunt. He is thrown into a jail cell and promised a trial after a few days' time where he will be tried for treason against the kingdom. I still can't believe Sir Alcaster would do something like that. And so brazenly, too. I wonder... What happened to Sir Fitzgerald? They say he vanished completely last night. Do you... Do you think he was working with his father? He worked against his father, by all accounts. <laughs> the truth is that I have no idea what to think. I have thought that I had everything figured out, but now I become more and more confused by the moment. Fritz was always loyal to a fault, but then... Sir Alcaster was the same way with the king, and I have not seen or heard of Fritz for weeks. I cannot really say. Speaking of Fritz, but we'll continue our Varg voice. Oh, good morning, Princess Emmeline. Sir Varg? Varg was offered a room at the palace for a few days' visit. He's being treated as Sir Mithras's valued guest. Not suspicious at all. I have heard from the other servants that he is Sir Mithras's relative who lives in a neighboring kingdom. Mm-hmm. I hope that you're feeling well now, Princess. Yes, thank you for your help last night. Is Emmeline blushing? Well, I know I won't be here long, but I do hope to get to know you better during the duration of my stay. I would love that. Then I'm looking forward to spending more time with you. Has no one asked him to remove his mask yet? I mean, <laughs> we don't have a ball on anymore. You don't even have that excuse anymore. Oh! I forgot that I am meant to be in my mother's room right now. Lucette, Sir Varg, I'll see you both later. I curtsy as Emmeline walks off, leaving me alone with Varg. I cannot help but feel uneasy in his presence. Something about him puts me on edge. He makes me feel uncomfortable. Excuse me, I have errands to attend to. Wait. Before you head out, I have something to give you. Give me? Varg reaches into one of his pockets and withdraws a letter that he holds out to me. That's a letter. What is this about? Hmm, well, I guess you'll have to open it and find out, princess. Ugh. My blood turns to ice in my veins. He knows I am the princess. That could only mean that he is... I have no idea what you are talking about. Excuse me. I'm about to leave when Varg suddenly grabs my wrist. The play is just about to start, Princess. You have a responsibility as the main character to perform impeccably until the very end. <laughs> main character? What? Otherwise, well... He grins at me. It is the same wolfish smile that he flashed me during the ball. You might miss out on your fairy tale ending. What? Before I can say anything else, I feel a hand grip my other arm. Someone tugs me back and away from Varg, then comes to stand in front of me. Oh, thank you, Rod. Stay away from her. Rod? Varg looks at Rod, then at me, his smile growing more crooked. What an interesting turn of events. I wonder how this will end for the both of you. Tell me, Lucette, what is he to you? He's more than a friend. I'm not gonna say- I'm not gonna put him in the friend zone, he's already in the stepbrother zone. No answer, hmm? Be in denial all you want. At the end of the day, you're going to have to decide who and what you will choose. Who or what to choose? Silence. You are harassing one of our staff members. Of course. I apologize for my rude behavior, your highness. You seem to know a lot about us. Are you a... I lower my voice. Are you a witch? You're asking the wrong person, Princess. Uh... He knows who you really are? I think you two are worrying too much about me. After all, I'm just a pawn in this game. Varg dips into an elegant bow and flashes one last smile before walking away. Indeed. Are you alright? I am. Thank you for helping me. You know I'd do anything for you. W what what? <laughs> Even Sebi shocked. Oh no. Rod shakes his head before stepping away. 
anything for me? <clears throat> Red, uh, Rod coughs, pulling me from the thought. It is possible that he is a witch, or that he is working with other witches, but we have no evidence to prove it. Until we figure out what's going on, you need to be wary of him. I know. Rod smiles at me gently. The look makes my heart thud once painfully in my chest. <laughs> S stop staring at me like that. Rod looks away, his cheeks tinged red. I feel my own cheeks warm at the sight. I wasn't staring at all. Uh, uh. Both of you are hopeless. If I was bigger, I'd put your two faces together so you'd finally kiss. Shut up, Sebi. Rod gives me one last look before finally turning and walking away. I place my hand over my chest where I can still hear my thudding heartbeat. Aww. This feeling. If it is what I think it is, then I have no right to feel that way about him. He is my stepbrother. I shake my head to clear the thought, then glance down at the letter that Varg just delivered to me. There's only one sentence written on it. Oh, great. Come to the throne room alone tonight. What could possibly go wrong? Chapter 9, The Wedding! Oh no, not the wedding! My sweet boo's gonna die! He wouldn't even lie to me about not dying. Mm. Gotta figure out how to break this curse, though. The throne room is empty when I arrive. I can only hope that this is not some sort of trap. Of course it's a trap. Soon after I enter, the door squeaks open and a familiar face enters the room. Sir Mithros? Sir Mithros walks toward me. When he is close enough, he drops to one knee and bows. I frown as I take a step back from him. My princess, do not be alarmed. I know of your true identity. <laughs> Sir Mithros flashes me a wide smile that causes a shudder to run down my spine. You know who I am? Then that means that you are... I take another step back as the blood drains from my face. Sir Mithras' smile only widens in my reaction. I'll say it for you. Yes, I am a witch. Knew it! If you are a witch, then Sir Alcaster is... a mere human. A fool one. And Varg? Nothing but my personal errand boy. A thought suddenly occurs to me. If Sir Alcaster was plotting against the kingdom, then did Sir Mithras also punish Fritz somehow? What about Fritz? Was he a part of Sir Alcaster's plans? Ah, the knight. To avoid confusing you, let us just say that the situation surrounding him is too complicated to adequately explain. I command you to answer my question, Sir Mithras. Was Fritz a part of this? If it makes you feel any better, he refused to be a part of this. He refused? Does that mean that he was not a part of the plans? Or just that he was unwillingly forced to participate in them? I am certain that Sir Alcaster would not be happy that his own son was disobeying him. He either forced him to help or assigned him outside of the palace. But if Fritz knew of Sir Alcaster's plans, why did he not warn anyone about them? Was he working with Sir Mithras as well? More questions swirl in my head, but none of them have answers. When this is over, I will personally ask Fritz about this. Once I can locate him. I shake the thoughts away and bring my attention back to Sir Mithros. Why bother with this reveal? What do you hope to gain from it? Before we start our conversation... Oh. Sir Mithros waves his hand, conjuring a faint green glow that envelops the whole room. Just in case someone decides to eavesdrop, I wouldn't want any of your witch friends listening in on us. Uh. Yes, I am aware that one of them has been snooping around the palace these past few months. Their snooping has made it more difficult to move around without exposing myself. Sir Mithros clicks his tongue in annoyance. Such a nuisance. He is referring to Dolora. She and Parfait warned me before that there was a witch in the palace. Is Sir Mithros truly that witch? I mean, he just cast a spell. I think we can be fairly certain at this point. I never really trusted him, not even when I was a princess. Now that he has revealed himself as a witch, I need to know what he plans on doing. 
You knew that I was the princess this entire time, yet you never offered me any assistance. If I had, Alcasta would have targeted you as well. What? Alcasta wanted to dispose of the royal family. If he had known you were the princess, he would have been after you, too. It would have been easier with no one remembering you as the princess. But unfortunately, Fritz told his father about you, thinking that Alcasta might be able to help and protect you. And it didn't help that Varg confirmed it. He's acting like they're two different people. Is Varg, like, Fritz's alter ego? Or maybe Varg is his own person. I don't know. It's, there's something very suspicious, though, about Varg. Your mother wouldn't have been happy with me if I put you in harm's way. That is why I had to pretend not to know you in order to protect you. Sir Mithros is silent for a few moments before he speaks again. Revealing myself to be a witch was necessary. I had to make myself appear useful to Alcasta somehow, after all. Then, of course, I learned of his foolish plans to steal the crown and decided to thwart them. Though not before I stole something from Alcasta first. I played him like the fool that he was. I told him I would aid him with my magic, so long as he gave me the knight's protection. Using magic is almost impossible in this place, so having the knights to back me up was crucial. The knights? What does he need the knight's protection for? What are his plans? Sir Mithra starts pacing the room, his expression still calm. I found out that he planned to dispose of me after he obtained what he needed, so I disposed of him first. Alcasta might have been able to convince most of the knights to aid him by promising them promotions, but... Well, my magic is far more convincing. Sir Mithra stops in front of me, his deadpan expression transforming into a smile. For now, let us desist speaking of my plans. The minute Alcaster's plans were thwarted, I knew I had to contact you directly. I am happy to see you in the palace, your highness. Although, we really need to get you out of those clothes soon. A maid's clothing does not befit a princess like yourself. That does not matter. My priority right now is to break my curse. Ah, of course. They must truly have been frightened to feel the need to curse you. I feel an uncomfortable tug in my heart. Oh! That's kind of terrifying. To think that the loosest bear would actually allow a witch to curse you. Sir Mithra shakes his head, disgust written on his features. When you suddenly disappeared that day, it was as if all traces of your existence had vanished. I searched for you endlessly, princess. When you first appeared here in the palace, I did not recognize you immediately, but I felt a touch of magic in you and investigated. My curiosity is what prompted me to investigate you further. When I tried hard enough, I found that I could see through the glamour that had been cast on you. Ah. So Sir Mithras truly was the witch Parfait was referring to when she mentioned someone seeing through the glamour. Imagine my surprise when I found out that it was actually you. That fairy bear has been nothing but a nuisance to us witches. First she betrayed your mother, and then she betrayed you before she had even met you. But mother... She was the Tenebarum bearer corrupted by darkness. Parfait only did what she had to. Sir Mithros looks at me, clearly surprised. What lies have those people been whispering in your ear? Everything the Queen did, she did for us witches. To protect us from the wicked humans who destroyed our kind. It is clear to me where Sir Mithras's alliance lie. Sir Mithros sighs, runs a hand through his hair, and then continues speaking. Huh. On your 18th birthday, you will follow her footsteps. You will make this kingdom a place for all witches to prosper. I am nothing like her. I refuse to make people suffer to feel the crystal. I never bore witness to the suffering the people had to go through during my mother's reign, but the stories are enough to reveal her true nature to me. It was hard to believe at first, but those people do not have any reason to lie to a servant like myself. They have nothing to gain from it. I finally understand why the hatred people had for me ran so deep, even when I did nothing to them. It was because I was the witch's daughter. Your mother wouldn't be happy to hear you say that. Let me assure you that this is not a destiny you can run from, dear princess. 
I will not let destiny take control of my life. I feign tiredness by releasing a long yawn. Oh. Uh, I'm sorry for cutting you short, Sir Mithros, but please excuse me. I am getting tired. I'm about to walk past Sir Mithros when he starts speaking again, his voice a low whisper. I notice that you have gotten closer to the family you so despised before. The prince included. I narrow my eyes at him. You care about him, don't you? I must confess that this surprises me, princess. Such a relationship would certainly be a scandal. Even if you two are not blood-related, he is still your stepbrother. Whatever will your dear father say about this? I clench my fists. He has no right to lecture me. I already know that these feelings are wrong. I know that I cannot have them. I assure you that there is nothing between the both of us. Oh, is that so? Are those lies you utter just to convince yourself? This man is beginning to try my patience. Hmm. Allow me to share a little secret with you, princess. I am not interested. I head for the door and reach for the knob. Oh, but I think it is something you would be most curious about. I do, after all, know the consequences of the prince failing to break his curse. I also happen to know that someone special to him is getting married tomorrow. My hand freezes. How do you know about all of this? I know all of the happenings around this place. That is my job, princess. Now tell me, do you know the ending to the fairy tale, The Little Mermaid? My blood runs cold when I remember what Emmeline told me about that fairy tale. If the prince fell in love and married someone else, the little mermaid's heart would break and she would dissolve into sea foam. I conducted my own investigation and actually met the witch who bestowed the curse on the prince. In meeting her, I found out everything that there is to know about it. I turned to regard Mithros with a frown. Ah, it seems I have finally gotten your attention. What do you plan on doing to Rod? Eh. To him? Nothing really. I was merely... curious. I wanted to know what you saw in him. What do you know about his curse? It stays true to the fairy tale. Only in this case the prince gives up his voice for a title. Still, it will end the same way. The girl will fall in love with someone else despite his sacrifice. You mean... On his beloved's wedding day, the prince will die. I had thought you might have reached the same conclusion. Tragic, don't you think? I had the same thought, but... Is Rod truly going to die? So the reason Rod gave up breaking his curse was because he knew that Viorica would never love him back. He knew that he was going to die the moment Viorica married. Dread begins to wash over me. Why not ask him yourself? As if orchestrated by magic, the double doors open and Rod steps inside. When he sees me, his expression relaxes. I have been looking all over for you. I wanted to speak with you about my discussion with Lady Parfait. I turn around to face Sir Mithros once again, but to my surprise, he is already gone. What a dork. When did Sir Mithros leave? Lucet, is something wrong? Was Sir Mithros really speaking the truth? <sighs> this music is so sad. I can't just ask, though. I've asked, and I've asked, and I've asked over and over and over again. Sweets and dairy cactus, I need to confront you. <laughs> Is this how you really want things to end? What are you talking about? Have you even thought about what your family will feel after they find out that you lied about your curse? Ugh. You are going to die when Viorca gets married tomorrow, am I right? That is why you told me that there is nothing I could do to help you break your curse. Because there really is nothing you can do to help me. Viorca will never return my love. But would it matter if someone returned it? Like, if, so if I return your love, will that break the curse? 
Can love conquer all? Somehow? Weirdly? I don't know. I already accepted my fate a long time ago. Lady Parfait was the only one who insisted I find another way to break my curse. Because she refuses to give up on you. And I will not give up on you either. I'm glad Confronting was right. Uh, I've been aware of another way to break my curse from the beginning, but... I would rather die than do what it is I need to do. Stab her? Do what? Have you not read? Rod's voice trails off when he sees my confused expression. <clears throat> Forget it. There is nothing more you can do. The reason I never told anyone the truth of my curse is because I never wanted anyone to blame themselves for not being able to help me. I was already a lost cause the moment Viorca really fell in love with someone else. I could never take that happiness away from her. Rod becomes silent, his gaze downcast. The vulnerable expression catches me by surprise. You should have told me about your curse a long time ago. How many times must I repeat myself? Telling you about my curse won't change the outcome. I could have tried to help you! Why are you so insistent on helping me? Because I care about you, you idiot! Ugh. My face warms up when the words escape from my lips. Rod also flushes. W what are you saying? Th that... I am worried about you on Emmeline's behalf, of course. I do not want her to think that I let you die. Just admit it already. Stop using Emmeline as your go-between. Ugh. <sighs> Just... Stop talking. You are in no position to tell me what to do. Lucette. There is a hint of warning in his voice. Now you better let me help you, or... Oh my goodness gracious me! Whoa! Whoa! Look at this! Ugh. Let this be the first kiss, not the last kiss! No... My words are cut off when Rod presses his lips to mine. <laughs> it is only a brief kiss, and when he pulls away, his usual somberness has returned. I told you to stop talking. Uh, I can only stare back at him, baffled. Rod, you do realize that you just kissed the princess. <laughs> Thanks, Sebi. Rod looks at Sebi, then at me. His face colors once more. He takes a step back, his lips pressed together. Uh, I'm sorry. Without any other warning, Rod turns abruptly and stalks out of the room. No! Sebi falls from his shoulder and falls to the ground, but Rod does not notice in his hurry to leave. I stare after him in shock. I can't believe he just ran away. I walk to where Sebi is and kneel down to pick him up. Are you alright? I'm fine. Thank you, princess. Sebi tilts his head to the side. That Rod... I wonder when he will start acting like a man. Suddenly kissing a girl like that is so unromantic. <laughs> Sebi knows what's up. I think about the warmth of Rod's lips pressed against mine and flush again. Rod may not say much, but he has a lot going on in his head. Thoughts he doesn't ever want anyone to know. I don't want to speak on his behalf, but I know he really does care about you, princess. He's just a little standoffish and has a difficult time showing his emotions. He's sensitive like that. Take it from me, I'm always in his head. I care about him too, but... What will become of my feelings once I break my curse? I will return to being his stepsister when this is all over. No, this is not the time to mull over such thoughts. He's gonna be dead tomorrow! Tomorrow! I'm sorry for asking this of you, princess, but... Can you return me to Rod? That boy is useless without me. The exasperation in Sebi's voice makes me smile. Sebi acts like Rod's older sibling. Of course. When Rod does not open the door, I knock again. Rod's eyes widen as soon as he sees me. His face flushes a dark crimson. Um, I'm here to return Sebi. Rod nods before slowly taking Sebi from my hands. Thank you. Be careful not to drop me again next time. 
next time. There's a hint of a smile on Rod's face as he taps Sebi's face. Sorry. He looks so much more at ease when he smiles. Rod faces me again with an apologetic expression. Lusat, I really am sorry for what I did earlier. You do not have to apologize at all. I know you did not intend to do that in the first place. The truth is, I actually... He trails off, then averts his eyes slowly to the floor. Suffice it to say, I'm not supposed to feel this way about you. What exactly are you feeling? Rod flushes deep red before turning away. Don't ask me such an embarrassing question. The hovering silence becomes more pronounced as we both stop talking. You said you wanted to talk to me about something you discussed with Lady Parfait. Yes. I meant to tell you that Delora will be here tomorrow to investigate. Now that we know Sir Alcaster is not the witch, we have to start our investigations over. Actually, about that. I know who the witch is. Uh, you do? It's Sir Mithros. He is the real witch. Sir Mithros? So when Sir Alcaster was throwing around accusations last night... They were true. Sir Mithros is also already aware that Delora has been investigating the palace. We need to warn her. Then I will send Lady Parfait a quick message. We need to keep up our guard around him too. Especially you. I'm sure he already knows that you're the crown princess. I nod in response. For now, we should wait for Delora to show up tomorrow. But it's getting late. You should go and get some rest. The moment he says the words, I realize he is correct. My eyelids are heavy. You're right. I think I shall take my leave. I'm about to leave when Rod suddenly grabs my hand. Ugh. I turn to face him. Lusat. This is the first time I've heard him say my name so warmly. I just want to... I can almost hear my heartbeat ringing in my ears as I stare at him with anticipation, but Rod says nothing else. Uh. Ah! Rod eventually releases my hand with a shake of his head. It's nothing. I cannot help but feel dejected. Good night, Lusat. Good night, Rod. Moments after Rod closes the door, I hear a familiar voice whispering in my ear. <laughs> Will you stop? Hanging around, you creepy guy? Ah, I see. Ugh. I jump back in surprise and stare at him with wide eyes. Sir Mithros is leaning casually against one of the pedestals. I told you he'd be hanging around these pedestal things. So that is where the prince disappears to every now and then. I had no reason to care before, but now I see it. If my guess is correct, he is also in league with the Lucis Bearer. When I do not answer, Sir Mithro smiles and shrugs. Eh, well, it does not matter. I glance around us and notice the green shield from earlier. Once again, no one will hear this conversation. Now that the prince has confirmed your doubts, what will your next course of action be? You want to help him break his curse, yes? Rod may have given up on breaking his curse, but I refuse to do nothing. From the way Sir Mithros is taunting me, he must know some other way to break the curse. Rod will not be happy about this, but I need to use whatever means necessary to save him. Do you know how to break his curse, Sir Mithros? Ah, I will assume that you have not read the full fairy tale if you do not know. Yes, princess, I know. Tell me. Mithros cocks an eyebrow and waves a finger at me. Do you not realize by now how witches work, princess? I propose a deal. I will help you, but you must help me with something in return help you? If you are planning on betraying the king, I have no plans of taking the crown or harming any members of the royal family. What? Then what is it that you would want from me? I prefer keeping you in suspense. I do enjoy surprises. You will find out the day after tomorrow. That is my... your 18th birthday. I look at him perplexed. Why does it have to be on my birthday? Don't worry, your highness. What I request from you will also make for a pleasant gift. 
what do you say? I bite my lower lip as I consider. I am worried about Sir Mithras's request, but I no longer have time. The Orca's marriage is tomorrow, and Sir Mithras has the upper hand. I understand. Good. Now remember, dear Lucette, witches are bound to their oaths. In order for the prince to regain his voice in life, something must be taken by force, just like in the fairy tale. What does he mean by that? Tell me what I must do. Oh, I did forget to mention this, but... It is not you who must act, but the prince. What? If Rod could help himself, he already would have done so. Please trust me, princess. You will have my aid, and I will make sure the prince's curse is broken. What does that mean, though? 